Hello, Cyberlock here. So today I'm going to show you one of this repair I done on this uh, iPhone 4 larger board for the iPhone 4 battery terminal connector repair. Um, so a customer is sending his iPhone 4 larger board with a rip-off battery terminal connector and the, all the solder pads are still there. So what I'm showing you right now is uh, um, in the video right now you're seeing the low temperature melting solder paste which is it will melt at uh, 138 137 degrees Celsius and before that the clear paste you see it's uh, a no cling solder paste from CyberDoc So the idea is that uh, you want to replace the existing lead free solder that's um, that was already on a mother, uh, larger board and you want to mix it with the low melting temperature also lead free solder paste. The reason being that um, what I'm going to do in this repair is uh, using the air bath method and if you keep the original solder or use similar solder like the um, uh, solder that melts at 230 degrees Celsius would make this repair very difficult because you, in, in that regard you will have to use a much higher temperature heat a hot air or infrared lamp to heat out the, um, the original solder used by Apple so instead of doing that, heating out the larger board up to 300 degrees Celsius, which is very dangerous to the rest of the components and oh, just too hard to work with. I'm going to use uh, less heat to melt the solder, but since this solder I'm replacing with, it will melt at 300 and, I'm oh, sorry, 137, 138 degrees Celsius. And um, so in such a way that I can, instead of using 300 degree to heat out the bowl, I can just have 200 degree would, would be enough. 200 degree Celsius would be enough for me to heat out this board. So let's review the steps. First, you clean the board. You put some solder, uh, no clean solder paste. I prefer the synthetic kind of solder paste and uh, uh, the rosin based or synthetic rosin based no clean solder paste uh, which both you can find it on um, our website cyberdog LLC. the reason I prefer these because well first of all they are no clean solder paste and second it's very the acid they use inside the solder flux it's uh, very mild. It's a uh, couple silic acid, so it's not very aggressive to the larger board, and it wouldn't. It's not corrosive. It's not conductive, obviously, and it's relatively no clean. It has a uh, low residue, but due to the synthetic material I use, it can be a little bit sticky after uh, you finish the repair. So I it, it would suggest you. You could cling it. I mean, it's no cling solder paste flux, but it's good to cling after you finish your um, rework. Just mostly for cosmetic reason. So now you see on um these uh, solder paste. It's in really small. If you you watch it under the microscope, it's a really really teeny. Um, 20, 20 to 30, 40 microns, I think, I believe. Uh, little solder balls. And when you heat it up, it will melt, then you become solder. So that's what this is, the, the gray stuff, the solder paste. And once you tin the pads with the new paste I put on, which is, a, it melts at 137 degrees Celsius. You want to clean the rest of the residues and uh, little solder balls on that's on the larger board right now. You don't want those to stay on the larger board. For one thing, it's gonna make your repair inconsistent, and it looks ugly. But most, more importantly, um, 
it might short something because these little solder balls, even though they're not attached to anything, they're still solder balls. They can move around and they are conductive. So one, I mean, they're relatively safe because they're so small and they're not exactly touching each other. So it's not exactly conductive. But if you have a large quantity on it, it when they dried up, it can it may, potentially can cause you problems. So you want to dilute and wash them out with uh, isopropyl alcohol. That's one. One doing that right now in the video. I'm brushing the bowl with isopropyl alcohol. Unfortunately, there's a water sensor sticker at this location, but by this point, I'm pretty sure the warranty is void, anyways. Um, it's. I mean, it, I'm doing a soldering on the larger board. It's not not much you could like. You have to clean it with the isopropyl alcohol, so it's, it can't. You can't really avoid getting that area wet. Um. Yeah, so the isopropyl alcohol, even though it's not water, it can trigger the water sensor. Okay, so um, I'm done with the so far the, the prepping for the air bath method. So you could do you could do the prepping elsewhere, but for the air bath method, you want to dangle the larger board over. Uh, free hanging space so you can fit a hot air gun underneath. Um, the idea is that because we're going to be using a plastic made um, battery terminal connector for iPhone 4 and that plastic in my experience melts around 250 degrees Celsius or a little bit above that. You can, you can start to see the plastic melt and smoke. So it will be best to not, even though you're not going to use a uh, temperature much higher to heat up this project, for this project, since you use the low melting solder, you, I, it's still safer to heat up the board from behind instead of from above. So... Um, yeah, so instead of heating the the hot air bath method is that you soak the larger board under, I mean, on top of the hot air blowing from behind the larger board. That way, the the most heat is not hitting directly on top of the plastic, the sense, uh, the heat sensitive plastic component directly. Hence, you you have a better control of the and distribution of the heat. Flux in this repair right now is very important, especially good kind of flux. You want flux that can, um, it has a vaporization temperature or boiling temperature to be around the melting temperature or a little slightly above the melting temperature of your alloy or the solder you're using. This particular flux is the white kind, um, quick alloy synthetic flux. It, uh, I believe it has a borrowing temperature of 240 degrees Celsius and around, around that range. After that, it will start to uh, boil and um, you will see smoke. So it's a good indication of like how hot it's or uh, the area you're working on with the, with the flux, this flux. And also it's gonna keep your board or at least the area you're working on stable temperaturally stable it's gonna not get hotter than that boiling temperature on vaporization temperature of the flux until all the um all the flux is burned off essentially and you see some some since i'm hitting from behind and oh by the way uh my hot air hot air gun right now it's probably set at 300 degrees Celsius or uh, 300 degrees Celsius-ish. But if you actually measure the temperature the, the larger board is getting, it's much lower than 200 degrees Celsius because the, the measurement you see on the rework station, it's actually inside, well, it's measuring inside the heating, ceramic heating element in the hot air gun, hence it's going to be a lot harder inside and outside. By the time the air comes out from the hot air gun, especially right now I'm keeping the hot air gun on high speed. Uh, low speed will take too long and 
Um, so high speed, and that that just the wind and the, the high speed will lower the temp temperature dramatically by the time the it leaves the nozzle. So um, if you want to be absolutely sure and absolutely safe of this, you can attach a thermal thermal coupler sensor right next to the area you're working with. Uh, right next to the area you be working on and measure the temperature on there. But since I know this flux melts at a certain temperature, and I also know the solder paste I use is a low melting temperature at 137 degrees Celsius. If it's not molten, if it's not melted, I know the temperature on the board is not anywhere near that that uh, amount. Hence, it's, it, I mean, it's really safe right now with the temperature on the larger board. Since I don't see smoke and I don't see molten solder, um, smoke let me from the flux, not smoke from the components. Also, uh, on the back of this logic board, it was really nothing but a giant heatsink, and that itself is gonna protect all the components inside from the other side of the logic board. So you can heat out as much as you want. It's not gonna like. It's very unlikely for you to damage anything from the back, as long as there's a heatsink on it. Even without the heatsink, all the little teeny components you see, when they reflow this logic board, they, they do this by machine and control often uh, profile with a heat profile of 300, at least 300 degrees Celsius or roughly there. So you this logic board is designed to be soldered with 300 degrees Celsius without damaging the components. They usually design the components to be 20 or 30, uh, 20 or 30 degrees higher than the, or I, I don't know how many degrees, but at least 10 degrees higher than 300 degrees Celsius. So when they manufacture this logic board, they don't damage it by accident during the often reflow. And since I don't have a soldering often, and I don't want to heat the rest of the logic board other than this part, then that's why you're doing the local, I use a localized uh, hot air gun too heat it up. Okay, so as you can see, this board right now is probably somewhere in between 240 degrees Celsius since the flux is not evaporating and the alloy is being melted, the solder is being melted, so it's above uh, 137 degrees Celsius. Once it's molten, like I did in the video, you want to poke at the connector a little bit, make give it a little uh, vibration and stress. so. It um so it can it can actually form a good join and bond with the solder pad and the connector. Okay, so this is the end of the repair. This right now you just wait until it naturally cools and then you can clean off the sticky residue from the flux that we use. And that's it. That's the finishing product. You have one, two, three, four, five connection being made. The four is the uh, critical one, and the two other on the side, in the back, that two connection for soldering. It's the, it's there to hold the connector down. So when you um, when you move the connector, it doesn't get ripped off on the board with the cable when you remove it. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. This is the iPhone 4 battery connector repair done with a quick alloy from cyberdogllc.com and the no clink flux from again cyberdogllc.com.